Hi guys, welcome back to Eleven. I'm here with Ruth today, who's going to be my model for this tutorial. Summer is almost at an end, and the new season gives us a chance to bring out all the coppers and all the golds. Today we're going to be doing some autumn ambre. So Ruth has existing colour on her hair. When I first met Ruth, she was a vibrant redhead, a mahogany red which she removed herself at home with a home colour remover and then she recoloured it to, to the colour that it is now. She has a little bit of regrowth through here um, but I'm not bothered about that because I'm going to tone that once I've done the balayage. I am going to avoid the regrowth area with the balayage because as I've already said I'm trying to introduce the texture, light and dark and shade throughout the hair. So we don't really need to worry too much about the regrowth because as I said that will be toned later. So firstly, I'm going to mix up my Red King freehand and start painting. So I've started applying my balayage. And I'm taking a chevron section pattern whilst working through Ruth's hair. And what that means is, is that my sections are actually quite deep triangles. So they're straight across the top and then they're triangular towards the bottom. Because this is quite a bold technique, it's quite a fast technique to apply to work through the hair. Once you've got your section, Again, I'm working in chevrons, which is a very traditional balayage technique. I'm avoiding Ruth's root area because that's natural, and I'm actually going to flood that with a slightly darker shade EQ formula anyway. So we're just working down both sides of the section making sure that I'm applying quite a lot of product because I want maximum lift from this. And then as I get towards the end of Ruth's hair, I'm working down onto my board Just blend the ombre out slightly, making sure that I've saturated right through the section. And then sit the hair onto the cling. I'm using Redkin's new freehand lightener to paint Ruth's hair. It's the most fantastic product. Prior to this being released, I would always use Flash Lift to do my balayage, which is a great product, but this is a very, very different product. It's a, a very creamy, pasty consistency. But what happens is, is as the product processes, the outside, it creates like a, a shell which dries, but the inside of the product stays moist, which means that you get maximum lift. It also means that where you put it is where it stays. Um, it's a fantastic product and it is the only thing that I would use now to do my freehand painting with. So now I'm working through the front hairline. I'm still using my triangular sections, but I'm painting much bolder strokes around the very front of those sections. 
This is to ensure that the final result has a very strong face frame and creates maximum lightness and texture around the front of the hair. That's Ruth's ambre application finished. As I worked up towards the top of her head and her parting, I mixed up fresh freehand lightener with 20 volume just to make sure I got maximum lift. As you can see, I've covered everything with cling film. As I said before, the lightener actually dries out on the outside to leave the inside moist, but I like to work with cling film not only to keep the meshes separate from each other, but again to ensure maximum lift. Now it's just a case of letting that process and then we'll be back to tone with Shazy Q. So I've shampooed Ruth's hair and rough dried it. But before I apply her Shazy Q formulas, it's worth mentioning the underlying pigment. As you can see, I've lifted Ruth's hair to a warm level nine. And that's because the end result is going to be warm. Please guys, when lifting the hair, always bear that in mind because it has a great impact on the final result. When I was coming up with a formula for Ruth's Ambre, I thought it would be fun to do a very soft colour melt using Shady Q. So I've got three formulas here. I've got one that is on a level four for her root area, one on a level six for the mid area, and then the end zone is on a level eight. They all have soft copper tones in them, um, and all of their, they're all listed in the descriptions, all of the formulas. I've also added half a dose of Olaplex number one to each formula. Uh, I love adding Olaplex number one to, I add it to all of my toners when I'm lightening hair. So let's get painting Ruth's Ambre. So I'm applying my root formula here, which is 4WG Sun T, 40 mils of that, and 10 ml of 7C, which is curry. And I'm just applying that to the very root area of Ruth's hair, just where she has no pre-existing colour. I've got a little bit of colour thickener in there, just to make sure that my formula doesn't travel down the hair shaft, anywhere near the mids. And then after I've applied this, we'll apply our mid formula. Moving on to my mid formula, I've got 6WG, which is mango, and that's 40ml. And then again, I've got 10ml of 7C, which is curry. It's worth remembering, if you're going to do a colour melt like this, just make sure that you wipe your hands on something in between applying the colour to the mid lengths and the ends, just to make sure that you don't transfer any of the darker root shade onto the mid lengths. It's the same as doing a fantasy colour melt using direct dyes you don't want to mix the colours together too much. I actually want the very soft graduation in the result. So now I'm applying my end formula, which is 8WG with 5ml of 7C and 5ml of 9AA. And once I've applied the formula, I'm just going to melt the mid and the end shade together, just very slightly, just to make sure that we get a really soft finish. Wiping my hands again in between each section. It's worth mentioning here that I always use a bowl and a brush to apply my Shady Q. You can use an applicator bottle. I just find that I get a much thorough saturation of product by using a bowl and a brush. So two things are worth remembering when you're using Shady Q. The first one is it's a 20 minute processing time. I always process mine for 20 to 25 minutes. If you want a softer result, then use a lighter shade or dilute the shade that you're using with clear. 
And secondly, I always apply it to dry hair. A lot of people tend to use toners or demi-permanent colours on damp hair. What you find if you do that is that you don't get such a deposit of tone and the toner just won't last. After 20 minutes of processing, I rinsed Ruth's hair and applied Olaplex number no. 2, which I then left on for 20 minutes. I'm really in love with this look and I think you'll agree it's a perfect way to move forward into the new season. As a hairdresser in the salon day to day, I'm always making people's hair cooler or removing extra warmth and it's really fantastic to bring in all the coppers and the golds. So that's all for Autumn Ambre guys, thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe and check out my Instagram, Craig's World of Hair.